Hello YouTube. Um, I got a question the other day of um, I had a picture of this knife that I just finished for for uh, James Teston and uh, it's a crook knife. The comment was what am I looking at? So evidently he didn't know what a crook knife was. So I thought maybe I would briefly go through what a crook knife was um, a brief history of it that I'm aware of um, Ray Mears is the one that, that I found out about this from. Uh, he used this to do, build a canoe. He also used it to, uh, to finish up a, uh, a tomahawk handle in one of his videos. So he, he claimed that uh, this knife here was a toolbox all in one tool. And I'll show you a little bit of, of uh, I'll give you a brief demonstration here in a little bit. But this is called a crook knife. And the reason it's called a crook knife is not from this, okay? It's a crook knife because of this, this angle here, all right? And from my understanding, it was uh, devised by the uh, Canadian First Nations uh, to assist them in their canoe building and, and basically any of their woodcraft. Uh, they, the bowls that they carve, they use the crook knife. The cups they carve, they use the crook knife spoons they use the crook knife because this right here uh, would allow them to get into the bowls and, and scoop out the bowls and things like that whereas a a standard hook knife that most of us are familiar with when doing spoons is real short and it wouldn't get into the deep places of a of a bowl as easily and there's also some other benefits to to having the the longer blade here and i'll show you that in a minute <coughs> But anyway, this is where this first came up, was the indigenous people, they devised this knife to, um, and this was pretty much the knife that they used, this and an axe. Um, when they went into the wilderness, they could take a knife like this and an axe in the wintertime with snowshoes, and in the summer, paddle back in a canoe. So uh, this was a very useful tool to them, and so... But I'm going to show you briefly how I sharpen it, and I just use uh, any any diamond rod would work. But uh, I find that this Kershaw uh, little diamond rod, it's kind of a flat oval, works great. And let me reposition the camera, and I'll show you how how I do that. Okay, basically I just find a flat surface and lay the knife. You see, and lay the knife rest it on the on the flat surface and take the, the diamond rod and tilt the blade to where the diamond rod is is on the the uh, chisel part of the of the grind this is a chisel grind which means it is just ground one way and it's flat on the bottom and just in circular motions if you prefer or you can do just rub back and forth like a, a double sided file. Just whatever you feel comfortable with, but that um, that's how I sharpen it. And then on the back side, what you want to do is the burrs, you want to get the burrs off. So just at, at a flat angle, at the same, you don't want to put a secondary on the back side, you want it flat. So just just knock the burrs off of it. Okay. Now, if you wanted to, like on the scanty blades, you can you can put a secondary micro bevel with a ceramic rod. I do that on mine, on my crook knife, and uh, it just seems to, to last longer. And all you do is take a ceramic rod at a steeper angle and just with the weight of the rod just hit it and it just puts a micro secondary bevel on it now what they would do is they would take this in soft wood and I really don't have any soft wood I have a piece of pine here that's almost rich lighter so I'm going to try to demonstrate the uses of this uh, of this crook knife <coughs> <clears throat> 
So this is an old piece of just yellow pine. And you can take this knife and you can round the corners, see how square the corners are? You can round the corners off to where um, it just rounded corners. Say if you wanted this to be a handle and you didn't want the corners there, so you could just take this knife and round the corners. Okay? You can also use this knife as a plane. It, it's, it's made to fit in your palm and has an angle to where you can, you can take the knife and you can plane wood. Pine is not the best in the world to do this with. It's old yellow pine. If you had soft wood like cedar, which is what they use this knife on, then you could take take it and just plane the wood and square them up. And see, as an example, this right here it's got the got the bark on it. So you could take this knife and you could square it. See, just like that, and you square it up. And if you, again, if you wanted to round the corner off to, to make a hatchet head, you just turn it over and use the, the round part and just round the corners. And this is why Ray Mayer said that this knife was a toolbox all in one tool. Because there's so many uses for it. And it just, it, it makes great feather sticks. Because of that chisel grind. But let's see if I can make a bowl out of this old yellow pine. But it, it, the other thing it's good for is making spoons. See how it just gets in there and just gouges out the material. See, in just a matter of, of minutes, you have a bowl. See, I don't know if you can see that or not, but that's that's a good quarter inch bowl right there deep. In just a few seconds. And again, this is not that soft of wood, folks. This is this is old yellow pine that's almost rich lighter. You see the, the grain starting to turn into to rich lighter. But that's just some of the uses, the main uses of this, this knife. Well, I hope hope that answered some of your questions. Um, a lot of people swear by these, and and I, I do too. I think that that if you're going to go out and do an evening or a night or a, a trek in the bush for bushcraft uses, practice skills, this little knife right here is just invaluable. Um, it's a great, great, great tool. Uh, price point on these. I make the blades and the handles for 80 bucks shipped in the United States. So the handles are hand carved. Basically what the blade does, the blade has another hook at, the, at this end. It hooks inside the wood and then it's just, it's just bound with cord. That's the only thing that's holding the blade in the wood. And the reason for that is so that these handles could be replaced in the, in the, in the bush with just a, a knife. That's all you need to replace the handle. So, um, and I have videos of showing me carving a, a handle in the bush and things like that. They're, they're not that difficult, just a little practice and, and uh, you can make them fairly easily. There's plenty of other videos on YouTube of how to do the handles and, and the crook knives and things like that. <coughs> but there you go. I hope this answered your questions and 
you guys get out there. Go uh, practice your skills. Get you a crook knife. Make you a few spoons and bowls and things. And, and uh, if you do, take plenty of band-aids and, well, lots of knives. Catch you on the next one.